not okay. This needs to stop now. I don't know if Orlando made the best pick they had. I'm not saying they made the right or wrong choice. I'm just still trying to process it while staying on the fence. To me, I see a lot of positive and negative ways that this could pan out. So just hear me out. But maybe let's start with the positive first before I'm attacked in the comments. Bencaro is exactly what the Orlando Magic need. He fits perfectly for them. For Orlando, their biggest need right now is a shot creator. My biggest criticism of Bencaro has been that he does nothing off ball. But with the Magic, that isn't really an issue, as their last few draft picks are near opposites, doing a lot of off ball playmaking rather than on ball shot creating and playmaking. Nowadays, Everybody throws the term point forward around anytime they see a versatile big, that the term has started to lose meaning. But Bencaro is a literal point forward. While growing up playing basketball, Bencaro was reportedly much shorter and grew up playing in guard positions. As he advanced in his basketball career, he grew into the forward that was drafted, having the body of a forward but the mind and playing experience of a guard. This means while Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony may be the official guards on the roster, Bancaro may be the one to bring up the ball and make the plays. The Orlando Magic also haven't had a primary scorer in quite a while, with Cole Anthony being the player with the highest points per game on the team with only 16.3, scoring less than Buddy Heald, Kyle Kuzma, and even Cade Cunningham in his rookie year. Palo, however, already comes into the roster with 17.3 points per game at Duke, being able to create offensive opportunities for himself as we mentioned before. Some of this as well also comes with his size. Again, while he may work as a guard, Bencaro is still 6'10", 250 pounds. Many times we've mentioned on this channel how the league has been getting smaller and faster, meaning as the league starts to get shorter, Bencaro is only getting bigger and taller as he uses his frame to overpower defenders in closer shots, as well as shoot over them in the mid-range, with the mid-range being one of his most comfortable positions because of his subpar three-point shooting. Mid-range shooting has also become a predominant and important part of close playoff games should Orlando start to get back to that place in standings come the next few seasons. His assists should also go up as well, with Paolo right now averaging 3.3 assists, but as we said, he's good at setting people up, including himself. Every single player on Orlando's roster is phenomenal when set up. Franz, Anthony, and Carter Jr. will all certainly have their fair share of pick and roll highlights with Pencaro as the season progresses. The problem they've had is how they set it up. With the players Orlando Magic have been acquiring the last few seasons, they've been putting the cart before the horse in a sense, acquiring pieces to put around somebody without the somebody to put them around. Orlando was trying to create a victory cake with all the ingredients but no way of cooking them together, and Bencaro will be the perfect oven for them. But to draw out this unorthodox analogy, here comes some of my problems with Bencaro. He's still preheating, which of course is expected with the rookie, yes, but I've mentioned many times my problem with Bencaro is his overall attitude to the game of basketball. He just doesn't seem like he wants it as many other players with grind mindsets. While writing up this video, I even came across some other channels of Magic fans themselves that have pointed this out. He did have some questionable moments in the final four game against UNC of all teams. In that game, he committed errors such as not being in the proper stance, ball watching, and half-hearted closeouts. Those are mistakes that could be determining factors that could drop Paolo below Jabari and Chet in the eyes of Waltman and Hammond. The main question with Paolo is that were those mistakes related to instinctual issues on defense, which is less concerning, or were they from effort? That's something that Bankero will have to answer in the coming years. Now, I could put defense as another main weakness of Bankero's, but that'll just be me being a little bit too nitpicky. Let's just say that it's an area of improvement and not a lost cause like Marvin Bagley. As dumb as the oven analogy is, I will use it one last time. Bancaro is an oven that you want to preheat to 350, but every time he gets to 300, he refuses to get any hotter. 
So again, the problem is if Bancaro even comes out to play, no matter the team he's drafted on. As time goes on, Bancaro may start to feel that the Magic need him more than he needs them, especially with the Magic. And rather than explaining it myself, let's take a look at this video of him real quick. Hey, this is Paolo, you know, just getting out here. Can't wait to get started, and I'm super excited. What's up, Magic fans? This is Paolo, you know, just getting out here. Can't wait to get started, and I'm super excited. As you can tell in his body language, Bancaro doesn't seem that enthusiastic to be there. In reports, he claims he wants to be there and, quote, couldn't be happier. But there's a difference between reading text in an article and seeing it with your own eyes. Part of the enthusiasm given in a report as well may not necessarily be tied to Orlando, but rather just being able to call himself the number one pick regardless of the team is enough to get him excited and have the enthusiasm redirected in the article. Despite Bencaro being a number one pick for Orlando as well and being what they need, Orlando also seemed to be hesitant with him continuously pushing back his workout with the franchise to the point he never got to fully engage with the franchise or its players prior to the draft. This could go further to affect how hard Bancaro is willing to play for an organization that didn't fully support him. Bancaro's work ethic is also present and leaks into other problems with his game. As we said, Bancaro grew up primarily being a guard rather than a forward, which made him phenomenal in guard responsibilities. However, as he grew, rather than working more on his weaknesses, he focused on what he knew. Meaning while he is able to playmake and overpower defenders with his size, he lacks in what a lot of people say is fundamental forward abilities. While Chet, Jabari, and even other players all throughout the draft were praised for their defense, Bencaro's is lackluster at best. Once again, Bencaro is never explosive when it comes to the defensive end of the floor, and often gets caught in defensive breakdowns where the ball is moving a lot, which could be a huge problem for teams like the Mavericks, the Suns, or the Celtics that like to pass the ball around the three-point line for the whole 24-second shot clock that they have in order to create a look. Also, despite him being able to set up his teammates well, almost all of these teammates would be set up in the same pick-and-roll sort of play. With all teammates using the same play to set themselves up and score, the repetition would make it much easier for defenses to read and create a strategy around, breaking them apart, especially if the team has a good coach to point it out. Despite his size, Bancaro can't guard the rim like many other bigs. Unlike, again, other players in this draft like Chet, Jabari, or even further down the list like Jalen Duran. He seems to phone it in on all his defensive plays, which again relates to his effort and inability to be as effective without a ball in his hand. However, the entire point of any team picking Bancaro in the top three, whether it be Orlando or not, was on the basis that his offense would outweigh his defensive struggles, which it very well could. Given the information we just laid out and the pieces that Orlando already has around him, the question then becomes, how long will this pairing last? Again, Bencaro carries a cockiness about him while having an unwillingness to grow himself in the areas he struggles. Bencaro doesn't seem enthusiastic about being there, and could already see himself better than the rest of the team. If Orlando doesn't start to see immediate success with him, Bencaro may decide to leave after a few seasons. Or inversely, if Orlando can't seem to work with him on his weaknesses effectively, they may decide to leave him for another player that matches his same playing ability. As always, we'll just have to wait and see what happens as the season progresses. As always guys, I know it's a cliche thing, but I ask you to please subscribe to support the channel. According to YouTube, we're getting about 3k views a month, but we aren't getting that many subscribers. So please, to help support the channel, just hit that subscribe button and share the video around, and as always, I will see y'all in the next one.